Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. It's late Feb 2024, a new DCS patch has come out, bringing three major changes to the F-15E. First, changes to the air-to-air -air guns mode. Second, the addition of air-to-ground ranging mode. And third, the addition of MGRS coordinate programming. So let's start with air-to-air -air guns mode. There are two changes. Change one is that when you enter this mode, it will now automatically reset the antenna elevation level. Just to refresh our memories, let's just show the controls we're going to use. To make our air-to-air -air radar screen sensor of interest, we'll press and hold castle switch left. To elevate our antenna up or down, we've got radar antenna elevation up and down. To enter our guns mode, we'll press weapons mode switch aft, gun. In that mode, we can move our TDC about with TDC switch up, down, left and right. And finally, to quick step, auto acquisition switch press. So in our basic search, we've got, you can see several bandits on the nose just to show the feature off today. I'm going to deliberately aim the antenna up. So assign soy to the air to air radar with the castle left long aim the antenna up and up it goes. Now I'm going to enter guns mode with the gun switch as we saw. Give it a second. The first thing if I pause altogether there is you can see that the antenna has been reset to its neutral position here. That's the first change. If I unpause what will happen now if you remember how guns mode works it searches in a small area. You can see the limits of elevation there and the limits of azimuth there. I can move that selectable area around on this screen here with my TDC, but I probably won't need to. There probably will already be some hostiles in that zone and it will select one of them automatically and lock him. Unpause, let, let that happen. There we go, we've got that guy there. The next new function is that we, if I pause, we can now cycle through other targets in that searchable area. So if I'm to unpause now and press auto acquisition press, Leave it and it's now selected a new one. Press again. It's now selected a new one. Press again. It's now selected a new one. Press again. A new one. Again. New one. And that's quick stepping between the different targets. Next, we'll look at AGR, air-to-ground ranging mode. This is a fully automated mode that the plane will use in certain circumstances. We don't have to worry about the use of it so much, but we must understand that when the aircraft takes control of the radar for AGR, we cannot use the radar, of which we only have one, obviously, for other uses. We cannot use it to search the air. We cannot use it to search the ground. So we're going to show an example here. An example of where the system uses AGR is in the last 15 seconds of a weapon deployment in auto mode. In those last 15 seconds, we will not be able to take control of or use the radar ourselves. So let's go and set up an example, shall we? We're going to drop a bomb in auto mode and show it happening first air to ground mode next we need to create a target point and let's just remember how to do that from a steer point so steer point one let's select and let's convert that to steer point one dot done menu one now we're going to select target point one dot one dot there we now have target point one dot uh, 16 miles in front of us next let's set up our bomb so menu on this screen packs armament air to ground select our one bomb in auto mode and that's critical this only happens in auto mode step nose tail our bomb is ready to drop we are currently one minute and 26 seconds from drop and the designation method for the target is sys g note that because that will change okay let's go and do something with our radar now as a human uh, menu air to ground radar take control of it all right we are now scanning the mountains in front of us so let's just let it happen unpause and we're going to fast forward one minute to drop, 30 seconds to drop, 20 um, pause or uh, normal time. Right, watch what happens when we go over the 15 seconds mark there. And give it a few more seconds just to update pause completely. Now we're no longer using SysG, we're using the air to ground ranging mode to find the exact location of that target. Why? Because it's the most accurate method. Why does it only do it in the last 15 seconds and not the whole one minute? Well, because we might want to use the radar for other things, so it only does it for the last few seconds. Note how the terrain is no longer being updated. That is just ghost raster from our last sweep, but we're no longer updating our radar. Note also a number here. That is the slant range from us to the target point, as calculated by the 
radar 40,870 or 60 feet. If I were to unpause, uh, if I were to take control of that screen or try and take control of that screen again with sorry too much happening now let's pause again with castle left um you can see radar is in use radar has been busy used by the system i can force it by pressing it twice i do now have control of this and i can move my tdc about but the radar is still being used by agr i still can't scan the scenery around okay let's keep going six seconds to go i'm not actually going to drop the bomb this time because you don't need to but it still will follow the sequence Give it a few seconds to update. And you can see it's all reset. I'm now scanning the terrain again and air to ground ranging mode has stopped. It's all automatic. You don't have to worry about it, but it's just a thing to bear in mind. We're also back to SysG for targeting now. Right, our last thing, MGRS or UTM coordinates, we can pretty much do from this plane. So let's have a look. We've got target point one and we've got steer point two. Let's move that steer point two. Until now, we've only been able to move that steer point two using lat long coordinates. We can now use UTM known as MGRS coordinates, which is great. So let's go and do that. So I'm going to go into our steer point sub page there and I'm going to select steer point two by pressing two and there we now have steer point two is selected and it's at northing there, easting there and that elevation there. Well, let's change that. We can now go to UTM to program the UTM in. We need to press program there. So we need to go and get a UTM coordinate. Press F10 to go to the map and let's just choose one. Let me turn off lat long and leave on. UTM or MGRS. Look at the top left of the screen. That is showing the current UTM coordinate of where my mouse cursor is. You can change that by pressing Alt and Yankee, and that changes between the different methods. Obviously, we want UTM MGRS. Right, I'm going to move a notepad on here, and I'm going to choose some random point, let's say over here, okay? And let's write it down 37 space T space Golf Hotel space 16570 space 22041 all right back to the cockpit so first let's do the 37 so 37 on the scratch pad put it there 37 next we've got the t the b and the h to choose which of those we type over press this button here t b and h let's start with t well t is actually okay we don't need to change that but b we do so b there and use the increase and decrease buttons here to change it. So increase, 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 golf. And hotel is already okay. Right, next is this 10 digit line here. One, six, five, seven, zero, two, two, zero, four, one. Into there, ping. I'm gonna unlock the screen and let's see if it's moved. And it has, remember, two was up there and it's now down here. Uh, other things to show. So if I went out of program, an elevation would be relevant as well. This hasn't changed, but just to show I can get the elevation at the top left of the screen as well is measured in feet. And if I were to add the elevation in, I'll just add a fake one in here. One, three, two feet, add it there. Finally, what about adding a brand new MGRS sequence point in? Well, if I create a new steer point, three there, I've got no current symbols to manipulate, so all I'm going to do is go to program. Then I'm going to type in my first uh, number. Let's just say 36 because it's on the screen there. Press there, and you can see it's come up as a, a, a kind of initial point, and we can go in and edit that. Sometimes I've noticed that function doesn't work, in which case I've tried pressing the increase and decrease, and that will auto-populate a point for you to change. Viewers, that's the three main changes this month. I hope that was useful, and bye-bye.